Hey, what's up you guys? I'm back with another video. Um, today is going to be about the Hope RX4 flat caliper. I bought the rear one because I found it at a semi-decent price. And uh, yeah, just uh, it's my latest installation and I'm going to tell you guys about what I think about the design, how it breaks, kind of, and um, overall value and a couple details. Lastly, I will tell you about my frustrations with the caliper because I am actually taking it to the shop in a few minutes because I can't figure it out. All right, you guys. So basically uh, I got this rear caliper. It's the four piston caliper, the RX-4 Hope uh, flat rear caliper. Understand that for these calipers, they are front and rear specific and uh, make sure you buy what you're looking for. Cause I'm a, I, I, based on what I was reading, some people prefer just to have the four piston caliper in front since they don't feel the need for the extra power in the rear since yeah, uh, you just end up locking up the brakes for some people. Anyways, um, I thought the look of these calipers is amazing. Uh, the one thing it's missing is a vented brake pad like the Al Altegra, but honestly, like, look at this thing. It's, it's gorgeous. Look at the cutouts, look at the aggressive design. The pistons can be custom, uh, the, uh, God, these cups can be customized. So you, they got a number of different, co different colors, gold, purple, green, so on and so forth. I don't know if they have special names for them, but you can switch these out and order them from Hope. However, realize that you're gonna to have to bleed the brakes again. So uh, I'll, I'll talk a little more about that situation later. Um, I like these calipers, not only for the aesthetics, but functionality in a sense too. Uh, I had Hope calipers on my S-Works Enduro, which I sold off, unfortunately, which I should have never done. And basically, those were some of the best brakes I've used so far. Uh, getting them situated and set up properly was a real pain in the butt. I remember it being troublesome, but uh, eventually I was able to figure those out. Um, you'll see that the brake pads are actually, they cover more surface area than the Shimano pads, so they will definitely grab a little bit harder. Um, they've got, I would say it's about an inch and a quarter in terms of uh, surface area from top to bottom and uh, it's pretty darn cool I really liked that uh, again because they're not vented they don't look as cool but overall um, I didn't find an issue with the Shimano brakes but I just like the looks of these better uh, the caliper itself weighs about I think it was 108 grams for the rear model rear one uh, it's just a little smidge more for the front one because uh, the bracket that Shimano has built onto the cal uh, bolted onto the calipers is actually built onto the front uh, caliper for Hope. Um, the Shimano Altegra R R8070 rear caliper that I took off actually weighed 138 grams. So that's a savings of approximately 30-ish grams. Well, 30 grams, yeah. Um, Overall, like, I didn't get a chance to weigh these before I installed them, so I'm not sure if that weight includes all the hardware, so on and so forth, but at the same time, I don't even know about that information regarding uh, Shimano's either. So you might want to be uh, checking on that if you're actually, if you care that much, eh, you know, sometimes I'm a weight weenie, sometimes I'm not. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. Uh, what in some, some things I found interesting about this caliper is the fact that you're forced into running a 160 60 millimeter uh, rotor in the rear because by default, uh, there's no bracket on the bottom. It's just literally 160 period and you can't go any smaller. Um, second thing, let's see, I would say is the pin that goes in here. It's definitely more unique in design and I think it's still there thought it was there, or maybe it fell out. Huh, I guess I knocked it out by accident somehow, magically. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess I didn't knock it out per se, necessarily, but anyways, there's basically a pin that goes inside of here. Uh, unlike Shimano's, it's literally like just a little curved wire and while it works, I just found that it was, it looked kind of flimsy compared to the, to compared to Shimano's design, so. Um, but it does lock in place pretty well. I guess maybe I took it out. But anyways, yeah, just, let's disregard that for now. 
Um, in terms of design, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Functionality, um, the larger pad is great, but here's where I run into issues. Uh, actually, no, first let me talk about bleeding. Bleeding, basically, you get a uh, M5 uh, sir tipped syringe, and it goes, this is the port right here, so this is a 2.5 millimeter Allen. You literally unbolt this out, stick the syringe in with a full, not full, but a uh, pretty full with a mineral oil, and you just pump it in. And they say there's air behind these pistons, so that's definitely something you're gonna have to figure out how to work out. You can lower the piston in position, tap the caliper, so on and so forth. It's a bit messy on this design, but it works fine. In my opinion, I just can't figure it out personally for the life of me, uh, how to get all the air out of the system, but maybe it's just either, if you Google it, there's a lot of people who actually have issues with these calipers, but again, I think it's also because of, uh, potentially, potentially due to uh, just experience. Uh, I'm planning to take the bike into the shop, so hopefully it won't be an issue. So once you put the mineral oil syringe plugged up right here, you just basically pump the liquid into the line and it's gonna go all the way up into the shifter. As you can see there, you'll have the typical Shimano cup that attaches to the top of the rifter and it's just gonna fill up with oil. On the top side, you're gonna to wanna to have a little bit of oil inside the cup so that you don't allow extra air into the system, to my understanding. Um, yeah, I, I, found, I, I, I fooled around with this thing last night for a good three hours and I just couldn't get it to work properly. I, I, I The system works, but the thing is I can't get the calipers to retract enough to uh, clear the rotors. So that has been my nightmare with this. And I believe I had a similar issue with the mountain bike that I used to have um, that had Hope, rotor, Hope, Hope calipers on it as well, but it still worked fine. I was able to get that set up properly. So I don't know what it is about this, this bike in particular um, I'm hoping it's not really a problem with the caliper itself like I've been seeing online and that the shop can get it all worked out. Um, other than that, I don't really want to drag this video out too long. Uh, the caliper itself comes with all the hardware. So the brake pads, two blocks, two blocks that actually go in here so you can actually bleed the system, push the uh, pistons back into place. Um, it is a four piston design again, two on this side, two on the other, one smaller, one bigger. Uh, it comes with the, the uh, olive and barb inside here, the, obviously this piece of hardware as well. Note, uh, make note when you do install this caliper in place of a Shimano caliper, it's gonna be, uh, this point is actually extended slightly compared to the Shimano caliper. So uh, you can either trim the line to be the same length as uh, if it were positioned with the Shimano caliper or you can just have a little extra slack in the brake line if that's okay with you. Um, another quirk is that you wanna read the instructions regarding the caliper because on the left side here, the front bolt here, it's supposed to have protruding length of seven to eight millimeters. And then the rear here is nine to 10, I believe, on at least for the flat calipers. I think it differs for other calipers as well. So that's definitely something you're gonna to wanna to look into because you don't wanna, couldn't like thread it in too far because these are, I do believe these are machine aluminum. So you don't want to mess that up. They are not cheap to ruin. Um, other than that, besides my frustrations of not being able to get the system to bleed properly, I do believe these are great calipers. Um, when I hit the lever, uh, it definitely has a different feel compared to uh, the typical Shimano setup because a lot of people, this is this feels like you get to one point and it literally stops. But in terms of uh, actual, uh, what do they call that? Gosh, I can't think of the word. But basically, it's not an on or off switch because the Shimano ones, they'll generally feel like on or off. And I believe that, I feel like uh, hook calipers, hopefully with the four piston setup, will have more of a uh, ta tapered feeling. That's a really poor choice of word, but I know there's a there's another term for it, but I can't think of it right now. Um, but hopefully it'll just have more of a feeling where I can just, if I lay down the brakes lightly, it'll just really go on slowly. 
and uh, and as I if I want to increase the braking power, it'll have more of a gradient to it versus a on and off switch. Um, yeah, I'll let you guys know what happens with the shop when I take the bike in, and then yeah, we'll see how it goes from there. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up. Um, if you want to get some, some more of this content, please subscribe. And if you have any questions at all, um, please leave comments below. I'll be happy to answer them when I get a chance. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. You guys take care.